today's show, the Dallas Mavericks take to NBA draft night, and they come away with Derek Lively and Isaac's favorite, Omax. We'll talk about what the Mavs did, the two trades, was it a good night for the Mavericks, and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks, NBA champions. don't believe you shouldn't be here loyalty never fades away and welcome you are locked on to the dallas mavericks my name is nick angstead media member and nba channel manager for the locked on podcast network your team every day thanks for being part of the show making locked on maps your first listen every day join the raccoon squad be an everydayer and subscribe for free. Just follow Locked On Mavericks wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day and to comment anything below. Let us know. What did you think about the Mavs draft night? Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. If you want to support the show, get text from us back and forth. We'll text your phone. We were texting throughout the night. Um, the draft and all that. Join our subtext. Click the link in the description below. And joining me, as always, my co-host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The O-Max Maniac, the One More Thing King. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know how to properly start. Oh. The Mavericks The Mavericks got Mike Miles. And <laughs> That's the start? I mean, it just, That's where yeah, we <laughs> Because the Mavericks... Got somebody down the road. <laughs> um, I don't I got, even know where you I got to let it ride a little bit, right? Keep on letting it ride. We'll oh, ride this thing out. Let it ride. Baymax. Omax. If you're, if you're listening. IMAX, <laughs> I don't care. Let's just keep on going. <laughs> I want to watch Baymax in IMAX with Omax. <laughs> if you're listening for the first time and you're confused, Isaac has been the biggest proponent of Omax, maybe more than anybody, maybe even his family, has wanted Olivier Maxence Prosper on the Dallas Mavericks, has wanted him as the tradeback target. He, we literally lost him. <laughs> I lost his feed. <laughs> uh, incredible. We just, we wanted, we wanted him. Isaac wanted him, finally happened, and so now we're very excited. We'll break down everything the Mavericks did. We'll talk about Derek Lively. We'll talk about Omax Prosper, what they bring to the team. We'll talk about the trades they made. And so let's start here. I will, First, I am a little bit – I was a little bit surprised they did not get any veteran players or like win-now players as of right now for the Mavericks. But I think overall, outside of that, they had a really, really good draft night. In the words of Nico Harrison tonight, uh, post draft, uh, Tim McMahon, if you just want to see that direct quote, Nico Harrison says, We feel like we killed the draft. You did. You did, Nico Harrison. Um, Nico, Dennis Lindsay, Mark Cuban, Andrew Baker, the whole crew, you killed you killed the draft tonight. And you know, I think it was McMahon who tweeted it earlier, kind of like, Hey, you know, the Mavs went into the night wanting to do, you know accomplish a couple of different things. And if they could accomplish, you know, one, two, multiple of those things, that would be a win for them. And one of those things was, you know, to shed, you know, shed some money to create a little bit of flexibility. And as we're, as I was sitting there watching the draft and, you know, it's going down, we've heard about the cam Whitmore fall, you know, yeah. leading up to the draft. Um, and it was getting closer to 10, you know, I'm like, just like I said on yesterday's pod, I'm like, hey, if, if it was up to me, like I think Cam Whitmore is one of those dudes that you just take a 10. But there's obviously something that we don't know. Yeah, like, it has so to be. There's and, so many teams, including and, the Lakers and Warriors in Miami. Like there's so many. I mean, 19 teams. It's not even counting teams with double picks there, but like passed on Cam Whitmore. So there's yeah. obviously something we don't know that if he was fully healthy, he would have went before the 10th pick. Um what Nico did tonight and being able to trade back just two spots and not only still getting the guy that they really liked in Derek Lively, but the flexibility of swapping out Bertons, which with a future, you know, move that they made later on in the draft with, you know, with Rashawn Holmes to, to move off Bertons and create this, you know, traded player exception that they would eventually absorb Rashawn Holmes into 
and therefore cutting some money too to allow them to be able to most likely we'll see what happens with Kyrie's contract some other money stuff makes it easier for them to be able to use the full MLE which is around that 12 million dollars mark I mean that's such a genius of a move that I'm I was shaking my head I'm like what what a brilliant move this is why we were so big on all right the 10th pick all the things you can do with the 10th pick before the draft I went to the Mavs facility and asked Nico Harrison and said is there a way that you could quantify or explain to fans how many different scenarios you're looking at uh, just by just by having you know the 10th pick and where you guys are? And he says, I don't think I can explain it, but we have so many options with this 10th pick, and, and we just wanted to have it. Like we just we were so glad when it came up on lottery night that the Mavericks got the 10th pick because of situations like this. There were talks, there's so many talks about trade backs. And yeah, they didn't get Capella, they didn't get even John Collins. Like they didn't get one of those guys in a trade back move. But what they did do with the trade back is they trade that traded down two spots from 10 to 12 with the Oklahoma City Thunder. They got uh they sent Davis Bertans to the to the Thunder. So basically the Mavericks went down two spots to get off of Davis's contract. So some people say, "Oh, well they they just they traded down to to dump a contract," which we were very against. But if you're doing it with just two moves like two spots down and you still got your guy in in Derek Lively, it works out in that sense. So they do that. They create this traded player exception because they didn't take any players back from the Thunder. They just sent Davis' $17 million to Oklahoma City. They bring back the traded player exception, very similar to what they did with Harrison Barnes and the Sacramento Kings when Harrison Barnes got traded during a game for nothing, basically. You know, uh, what was it? Justin Jackson and uh, uh, the corpse of, of Zach Randolph. Zach Randolph, and, baby. And then they take that traded player exception and they absorb Rashawn Holmes's contract, $12 million this year. I think it's going to be like $13.4 million next year with that player option because I think he had a trade kicker. And then um, they also get the 24th pick. And with the 24th pick, they take Olivier Maxson's Prosper. And so that one move going down from 10 to 12, trading Bertans allowed them to get the 24th pick. Like, just like you said, a very smart move. And we've needed, the Mavericks have needed, and Mavericks fans, honestly, you have needed Nico Harrison to make a move where you go, that's it. Boom. Like, great move. Like, just great value all around. A move that is creative and uses their one asset, basically, that they had in this 10th pick to create multiple different opportunities. And they did. They got the opportunity of Derek Lively, opportunity to get off of Davis Bertans, and the opportunity to bring in Olivier Max's Prosper. It's a win all around. It did not solve their immediate need of, of talent right now. We'll talk about that probably in the next couple of days and into free agency and wait to mm -hmm. see what they have there. But for tonight, it's a win. I think it's a win all around because of what they were able to do with just moving down two spots. Back on lottery night when they landed the 10th pick, which I want to give a shout out to all the people who hammered the Mavs for losing those last two games <laughs> to be able to keep the 10th pick in the draft. <laughs> Um, bummer, you know, they missed out on the chance at a play in. Um, but because they lost those two games and they missed out on the play in, uh, they got the 10th pick. And now look at the, look at the ripple effects that this could lead to that because they lost those few games, which they weren't going anywhere <laughs> in the play in or playoffs. Yeah. They get this 10th pick, which now means they got off Berton's contract. They got lively Omax. They got closer to using the MLE that like, <laughs> I mean, it's just like wild how that one little, those decisions right there has shaped so much, but on lottery night, when they landed the 10th pick, we went on the pod that night. And I said, I went as far as saying it would be a mismanagement yeah, you did. from Dallas. If they didn't move back, if they didn't use this pick to add a, add to add more things to this roster to add more things that they couldn't just stand pat at 10 and just take a single player. And that's what they did tonight. They used this opportunity. They have some other assets. You say, well, it goes one. This is their one asset. They their have some other their assets. best one is, is it what was their best seen. one. They have the future first. They have Josh green, Jaden Hardy, which that's an underrated move of all this is like, they kept pretty much every other asset that they have. Yeah for future trades that <laughs> probably going to come up in the next they, week or so. They use their best asset in the 10th pick to get rid of their worst asset in Davis Bertans contract, right? Like it just, it just worked out. Yeah. And to flip it, to, to swap the Bertans contract out for basically Rashawn Holmes, which, you know, I'm, we'll talk about Holmes in a little bit yeah. in that draft. But we, we, we need to talk about Derek Lively in probably second segment, but just overall, what, what Nico Dennis Lindsay Cuban and those guys did tonight in that room of, adding some younger pieces 
now you now you have now you have like four guys now that's like 22 and under if i mean you're not even counting like a mock miles or whoever it is but it's like now you start looking across the board and it's like lively's 19 omax about to turn 21 you know josh green's 22 Jaden hardy's 20 it's like all right they're kind of adding some youthfulness to this team while also being win now and having a Luka Doncic, a Kyrie Irving, and they're going to go get somebody else here in, in the coming week. They finally get to use the excuse that they're a young team coming up next year. <laughs> Shout out Kirk. Coming up, let's talk about Derek Lively. What do they get now with Derek Lively, the center from Duke? What can he bring to the Mavericks day one? We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is the place. I've done like five Bird Dogs ads tonight doing the live stream. I was on for three and a half hours on the Lockdown NBA feed. And I believe it every time. Bird Dogs are incredible. They're incredible shorts. You can go get them. They stretch like khaki shorts and are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. And they really do. Isaac looks great in them. Bird Dogs Mm. fix the issue of, you know, a better way than like a regular short that are like a stiff, restricting cotton. They wanted to fix that issue. So they did. They made a short that feels like a gym short when you wear them, but it looks like a khaki short or like a more uh, elevated shorts, basically. They also have joggers. They have pants. They have all kinds of other things you can check out, too. Go to birddogs.com slash LockdownNBA for a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash LockdownNBA to get a free Yeti-style tumbler. Again, birddogs.com slash LockdownNBA. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, and listen to us every day. We're live five days a week throughout the season and the off season, just basically all year round. We're, we're here for you. We do more Mavericks podcasts than anybody else out there. Uh, and so we will be here. Thanks for tuning in. If you're listening for the first time, we appreciate it. And Isaac, let's get into this. Derek Lively with the 12th pick. The Mavericks got their guy. Yeah. They could have just taken him at 10. And I thought, I told Tim Cato right before Nico Harrison spoke, I was like, you know what? I feel like all these trade down options will just fold. Like they they won't work out. And then they'll just take Derek Lively at 10 and that'll be the night. And that could have been the night because they didn't have a second round pick. They didn't have another pick, but they ended up making all these other moves and it worked out really well for them. But with Derek Lively, what do they get with him at the 12th pick? I mean, he fits exactly what they need in the big man spot as he's 19. He's seven one. He has a 7-7 seven, seven wing, uh, wingspan, which is mm. one of the lar- longest wingspans in NBA history. He's up to 230 pounds now. Yeah. Um, you look I, at I him heard come- 235, by the way, from Rob. 235. 235. There you go. Get those extra five pounds in there. You get, you know, you get a guy who was the number one ranked player in his class in ESPN in, in, two, in 2022. Yeah. He chose Duke over North Carolina, over Kentucky. Um, you look at a guy who his, his mother was an all-time basketball player at Penn state. He was on the swim team, football team in high school, uh, his story. I mean, there's a great Mark Spears story, uh, on his life, uh, in his, you know, his, his father is the cancer battle of his mother. Um, it's crazy what all he's already walked through at, at such a young age, but as a talent on the basketball floor, you're getting a guy who is going to defend the rim. I mean, we, I mean, we literally haven't had a guy like this in so, so long in Dallas, like a young athletic springy guy like this with that has this, that had this pedigree coming out of high school. Michael Finley went as far as even saying it (laughs) after the draft pick tonight of mentioning the name of Tyson Chandler, which is, you you know, (laughs) (laughs) which, which, (laughs) which, which Mark Stein, you know, through the, (laughs) To, through the Tyson Chandler comp out, Mark Stein said he heard that from teams. By the way, Mark Stein teams, not, yeah. didn't just com, didn't just compare him to Tyson Chandler. Said that teams were saying that, and I thought that maybe it was a smokescreen from the Mavericks signaling, like, "Hey, we're really interested in this guy. Trade up!" But uh, it ended up the Mavericks really did believe that. Uh, so, so listen, he he goes to Duke. He was this highly rated, you know, high school you know prospect going into Duke. He has this calf injury in the preseason that it kind of just threw his whole start to his like rookie, you know, rookie, his freshman season at Duke, the only season he played at Duke took him a while to get acclimated, you know, to everything. But once he got going, I mean, by the end of the end of the year, he had all defensive honors. He was the best defender in in college basketball uh, at the big man spot. But, you know, he started really rising up the boards when what happened? 
He has the pro day in Chicago with clutch. Rafael Barlow is there. Other people were there and he hits 14 straight threes. He's draining the threes. And then the buzz starts happening. And it's like, oh, okay. The seven foot one, number one ranked high school player just a year ago who didn't shoot many threes at, at Duke is now turning some heads. He's man. He's super athletic. He could hit the three. He can defend the paint rim roll, all the stuff that you want in a big. And then that's when he started going up boards and, and Dallas had their eyes on him. The Mavericks don't expect him. I, I hope that they don't expect him to, to shoot threes right away and be that, but he can, and he can at least space the, he can at least space the floor and be that as an option. What he's going to be for them though, is he's going to be a rim roller. He can, he can yeah. do that. He can catch lobs. He can do all that kind of stuff. His size, his tools, like he's, he's, Mobile as well, and a good athlete, light on his feet, pretty good in space, um, a lob threat, a rim runner, like you said, uh, and like he had more assists than turnovers. He talked about that in his draft, in his post draft interview. Uh, he went on with with Skin and Mark Stein and, and Coop and Bobby Corrala. He talked about his passing and his ability to find guys and find cutters and find Luca and Kyrie and things like that. And I was like, well, it'll probably be more so the opposite. But I'm glad that you're excited. Probably I'm glad yep. that you're excited about <laughs> that though. Uh, and I think that he's just going to be. Such an asset that you can use in a bunch of ways. You're not going to ask him to post up. You're not going to ask. Nope. You're not going to give him the ball and say, "All right, go get us a bucket." Like that's just don't not, dribble, bro. That's that's not the case. You're asking him to be a finisher, finishing on lobs, finishing on maybe a catch and shoot three here and here and there, and then you're asking him, "All right, be a defender." And his answer when he interviewed with those guys about being a defender, I thought was amazing. He he answered and said, hey, I want to be that guy on the back line that calls out plays, that calls out cuts, that calls out picks, that calls out... The, the Mavericks needed that so, so badly. Somebody back there that they can defend the rim and that isn't just like running around the chicken with their head cut off because Maxie had to run around and, and rotate. Dwight had to run around and rotate. And I think having somebody back there like like Derek Lively is really, really going to help them. Is really going to help them. Do I think that he starts... From day one, I, I don't know. I'm going to need to see some more. I'm going to need to see what Jason Kidd thinks about him. Uh, we've only seen photos of Jason Kidd talking to him on the phone, which he seemed happy about. But I'm not going to take much out of a still image. So I, I'm going to I'm going to wait to see. But I know that he's bringing all the things the Mavericks need. <laughs> like literally, like yeah. make a checklist of what they need in the center, and he 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 fills them all up. Listen, when we did our our draft profile on him back, you know, a week or so, you know, a few weeks ago at this point. We always end those profiles with why should the Mavericks draft him? Why should the Mavericks not draft him? Yeah. For reason why they draft him for all the reasons why what Nick just said, because he fits a lot of those things that Dallas just hasn't had in the center spot for a long time. The reason why Dallas shouldn't draft him, what we said on that pod was, hey, the, the track record doesn't show that your your main big man is a rookie or a super young big when it comes <laughs> playoff time. Yeah. The the just the track record's just not there. Even like Walker Kessler had a great season in Utah, but Utah was kicked back on their couches come playoff time. So we got to, you know, I think there's a little bit of expectations management on it of, Hey, long-term, I think it's a lot of fun. I think there's a, you know, there's a fit there. There's some Luca chemistry there and all of that, but short-term it, I don't think this completely takes them out of them going and getting another center. No, now, I, it would be shocked if you know if they go out and try to like trade for a DeAndre eight, and I, I don't expect that. But if they if they go out and add another center, it wouldn't shock me. Even though they added Rashawn Holmes, even though they they ha- used the twelfth pick on on Lively, um, I'm not expect like you. I'm not expecting to step in day one and being a 35 minute starter. Um, could he be that by the end of the season? Very well, could be, but. Uh, right now, I don't know. I don't, and he could start at center at the beginning of the season. I don't know that yet, but I, I get the concerns a little bit as far as hey, what, what's he? How's he going to contribute right away? But on paper, man, he fits so much of what Dallas needs, and he's going to be a lot. He's going to be a lot of fun to watch and a lot of fun to play with Luka Doncic. It, we don't need him to to play make, just rebound, yeah, right. block shots, work on the pick and pop three learn how to roll to the rim from like Dwight Powell. And that's how, you know, Luke is going to make you a lot of money in this league. Coming up. Let's talk about Olivier Maxis prosper. What are they getting oh, into him? Yeah, baby. We'll talk about Rashawn Holmes with the trade as well. And we'll get into all that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Game Time. Game Time has you covered right now for all the events and things that you want to go to. They got tickets for you. Go check out Game Time and see what's available. They've got 
July 29th, Barcelona at Madrid at AT AT&T Stadium. They've got tickets for it. You can go check it out. It's a top pick right now. Uh, Dave Chappelle. They've got Book of Mormon. I love that show. Book of Mormon coming to the Music Hall uh, August 6th. Those tickets start at $37. That's pretty good to go to that show. Fallout Boy coming to Dos Equis. There's a lot of cool stuff coming to Dallas and DFW. Uh, Wherever you are, uh, Game Time has you covered. They also have View from Your Seat, so you can check out that. You can see all that, um, and you can download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code LOCKEDONNBA, all one word, all caps, LOCKEDONNBA, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Also, want to tell you about Prize Picks. Go to Prize Picks right now and see what they have available for you. They are going to have all kinds of great stuff for MLB, all kinds of stuff for uh, football coming up. Man, they've got I don't even know what baseball. I guess it's college college baseball. I guess that they have. They have PGA as well. PGA, you could pick five five point five birdies or better. You pick more or less on that. So if you're like, all right, Scotty Scheffler, I think he's going to make. Over five and a half birdies on the TCB River Highlands. That's a fun thing if you're just hanging out watching some golf. If you just want to see, all right, can this guy get more than five birdies, basically? Uh, that's a fun thing you do on prize picks. But you pick more or less on a projection of a stat on any of these sports. You put it all together, and then you can put some money down on it, and you can win as well. Again, put use the uh, promo code LOCKDOWN. You get 100% deposit match up to $100. Again, prizepicks.com. Check it out today. All right, Isaac Harris, we're talking about the Dallas Mavericks draft night. I thought they did a great job in what they were able to accomplish. We talked about Derek Lively. Let's talk about Olivier Maxens Prosper. So why did you receive more tweets than you have ever received in your life tonight? Because And wearing sunglasses on the podcast uh, about Olivier Maxens Prosper. Well, besides the, uh, besides the national anthem of the All-Star game that one year, that was like oh, my, that's very true. my one viral tweet thing. But... I, yes, in a span of like a few minutes, I haven't received so many Twitter notifications from people uh, because I've been talking about this guy for weeks now. Yeah, this guy, um, I just love everything he's about, man. I I love you know his story of going from the NBA Academy Latin America, Mexico City to Clemson to Marquette. Want to play with Shaka Smart? Um, he's twenty. He is 6'7", has a 7'1 wingspan. Just think about that for a second tonight. The Mavericks walked away with two prospects tonight. One of them is a 7-footer with a 7'7 wingspan. The other one is a bigger wing that's 6'7 with a 7'1 wingspan. Two guys with over 7-foot wingspans that Dallas walked away with tonight. That's exactly what Dallas needs right now. Exactly. Um, He has a 40.5-inch vertical, which is in the top four at the Combine. 35-inch standing vertical. That's second at the Combine this year. When you read anything about this guy, you always hear about what an impressive interview he is and how smart he is, how just classy he is, speaks four languages. We could go all day about his like character, but his defense, what you want a- as a team, watching the Denver Nuggets and watching what Aaron Gordon and some of these bigger defenders on the wing are doing, you look at that and say that could, that is what Omax could be with Dal- you know, with Dallas. I've seen him in college chase around Jordan Hawkins at UConn. I mean, a six seven guy chasing Jordan Hawkins around the floor, seeing him body up Cam Whitmore, seeing him chase around Colby Jones at Xavier. Like this dude can guard guys all around the floor. He goes to the combine, puts up twenty one and eleven, shuts it all down. And you're like, all right, teams are falling in love with him. He also makes 65% of his shots around the rim. What he does well, not just defensively, he is the definition. This this is like one of the trendier uh, the trendier words right now to use is dog. But he is the definition of a dog. This dude is going to just – he is going to get more fans in Dallas to fall in love with him than – I mean, yes – I, I don't want to say and like try to be, you know, all the stuff on it. Let but uh, I'll dog me. I'm not gonna <laughs> let nobody I'll dog me. I'll scoop. Uh, <laughs> man, he, he's just I, I think he's gonna be a lot of fun in Dallas. A lot of it, you know, comes down to a shot and what's what's the high range of that. But when you start looking at guys like the PJ Tuckers of the world, the Jared Vanderbelts, the OG Ananobis of the world, he's gonna get out in transition, he's gonna bust his button hustle, he's gonna cut, he's gonna do all the dirty work. And he's huge and he is going to be on the 
receiving end of this Luka, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving uh, passes and space. I couldn't be happier for, for a pick in Dallas. He fits perfect what <laughs> Dallas is doing. I was so happy for you. Everybody is so happy for you. Uh, Leaf to lean on the, the lockdown um, draft feed talked about uh, and compared Omax Prosper to Dorian Finney Smith. I think he's better than Dorian. You can see, be better you Dorian. can see it though with the length, with the, you know, he's shot is shaky coming in with the intangibles. Like you can see some of the things like that in, in that style of player. Uh, but you, yeah, you should have seen me when they made the trade. Whenever, oh. whenever they made the trade for to you know Dallas is you know absorbing Rashawn Holmes and picking up the twenty fourth pick, I stood up. I was like, "No, they're doing it. They're trading. They're getting Omax, baby." <laughs> I was so excited. Yeah, people were were tech were uh, tweeting us and saying, "Was there? Does anybody have eyes on Isaac? Is there? A, was there a live stream? Did he video himself?" I'm like, "We didn't know. It came out of nowhere, really, that they made this extra trade and were able yeah. to, to pick him up, basically just for." You know the traded player exception and taking on Rashawn Holmes' deal. The Mavericks needed two. Mavericks needed three things this offseason, and they still probably need them in a little bit. A starting they still got moves to do. They, st- they will do some more moves. A starting center, big wings, and a third ball handler. They they got two of those things in Derek Lively, who's a, maybe not the starting center right away, but eventually he will be. And then Omax is a big wing, a big defensive wing. Is exactly what they needed. He fills that spot. Uh, I don't know if he's he's gonna play right away. I'm I'm curious to see how Jason Kidd will will handle him, how he'll handle his minutes and all that. They talked about development earlier today and how they pride themselves on development with Josh Green and Jaden Hardy, and they waited on those guys a little bit. And Jason Kidd didn't play Josh Green right away in first year, but he did play him the second year. Waited on Jaden Hardy till the end of the year, and then ended up playing him. So we'll see what happens. But we know that Jason Kidd will play guys if they defend, right? Yes, and, and, and both these guys will. And, and I I think. I think we all need to just just wait. I think we need to wait to see before we declare roles in minutes. We yeah. need to wait to see how the roster shakes out. If they, you know, do a 3 for 1 trade or a 2 for 1 trade or, you know, if if all of a sudden Maxi's not on this team anymore, it's like, all right, well, you know, Prosper might have to play a little bit more or if Josh Green and a couple of guys are sent out, then it's like, all right, well some of these guys, you know, they got to play. So, um I think we got to wait to see how some things shake out. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's still question. There's a lot of question marks, but I think the Mavericks did really well. Let's talk quickly about Rashawn Holmes because Rashawn Holmes comes over in this deal. And he's a guy that I feel like a lot of people, a lot of Mavs fans at least targeted for a while. It's can, you know, the Kings aren't really using Rashawn Holmes. Can the Mavs bring him over? And he was a center that they had over there. He has not played for the Kings. Uh, this, this is, he, It's a really weird situation where he was like a, their starting center for a couple of years. He started, 61 out of 61 games in 2021. Then he started 37 out of 45 games in 2022. And then he played in just 42 games and, you know, didn't only started one of them last year, only played like eight minutes a game, played like th- like didn't play any minutes in the playoffs at all. And they needed rebounding. Like they just needed rebounding really bad. And he couldn't get any time at all on the floor for them. So he's coming in and I, he's now just in this mix, right? Like I've said this like three times now, he's just in this mix of JaVale, Derek Lively, Maxi, Rashawn Holmes, probably Dwight Powell coming back. Like you've got five five guys now that you're like, all right, what are we going to do with this center rotation? Uh, it, he just is part of that now. I have I have I'm walking into the Rashawn Holmes experience with no expectations because right. we haven't seen too much of him. Uh, like you said, he only played in 40 some games last year. He is six ten. He's basically 30 years old. Um, He's due twelve million dollars this coming year. He has a twelve point eight million dollar player option. Then you start include some of the trade kicker and all that Bumps stuff. I've seen some bit. stuff about Sacramento, you know, having to pay some of that. I don't know, but either way, that's basically what it is. He has that player option for that following year. Um, think like a better Dwight Powell. Like he's always been good in 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 the pick and roll. That's always been like his thing. That's why he's always been kind of linked to Dallas. Like man, he would be kind of a cheaper option to come in and yeah. play. You know, play some pick and roll and stuff with Luca. I just don't want to have any expectations for him. I'm not going to sit here and say, dude, he's going to be the killer pick and roll guy, you know, with Luca and just be exactly what they need. I'm also not going to sit here and say he's like trash and wash and we don't, you know, he's useless either because he hasn't played in Sacramento much and he didn't like crack the rotation, Harley. So I, I just want to kind of just see what it is. Like he could come in here and be like, dude, yeah, it was just, I needed a change of scenery. I mean, the Kings went on this run and he really wasn't playing at all for him. And he could play. And I think he's just another body 
he's gonna I think he has a path to playing a little bit more than what Davis was and that's your trade out like Davis had a very defined thing of being this like laser to come in drain a three whenever we just need some type of offense whatever I think if, especially if Dallas makes some more moves at the center spot having a guy like him which is kind of like the Dwight Powell role. If they bring Dwight back, it'll be a little Spider-Man meme-ish. But if Dwight goes elsewhere, now you got your guy who is a really good pick and roll guy that knows how to run the pick and roll and that could come off the bench and play some possessions with, with Luca and like, all right, Luca, like there's a good chance, or I wouldn't say good chance. There's a chance that like Luca helps like revitalize his career <laughs> a bit next year. Maybe uh, yeah. him coming off the bench or something like that. But I'm not expecting huge things from him. Yeah, it'll be a bonus if that does happen. One thing that he is yeah. really good at, he's got a really good floater. Like you, you get yeah. him in the pick and roll, like you said, and he can he can hit a floater off of that. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't expect very much from him at all. I'm very curious to see what happens with the center rotation. We know that one of the things the Mavericks wanted to do is revamp and rechange the center rotation. Mark Stein came in and said, well, with Rashawn Holmes and Derek Lively, they did change it all over. I'm not really convinced <laughs> in that as of right now, but I guess they did add two players to it. Uh, I mean, it's two bodies. He, he He's better than JaVale. So, I mean, I, I would expect Rashawn Holmes JaVale is? to be. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think he is, which once I ho- again. I hope so. Um, I would expect JaVale to be on another team probably uh, over the next week or so, but uh, also, can we say just real quick, they, you know, news after the draft, they signed Mike Miles to two way spot, which that means, you know, one of those guys is, is gone in uh, McKinley Ryder. No, because now uh, with the new CBA, they have three. That's true. I had, for, forgot I had about forgotten that. about that too. There and Tony go. East brought it up during our live stream as well that they, there's three two way spots now. So that may still be, I mean, they may also move one of those guys up to a, a regular rotation spot in AJ Lawson or McKinley Wright. Um, also, Chris Haynes reported that they, uh, the Mavericks signed Jordan Walker out of UAB to a one-year okay. deal, uh, and so hey, another player coming come to the Mavericks. Uh, like a he's like a Sounds like a camp invite. He's yeah, that is a camp invite. He's like a <laughs> he's like a five ten guard or like some, something like that. Uh, but the Mavericks summer league team is gonna be really fun with Mike Miles from TCU, Jaden yeah. Hardy probably gonna play, Omax, Derek Lively, like that. You know, AJ Lawson probably, McKinley Wright probably. Like that's that's a pretty fun summer league roster if they're all gonna end up playing. Yeah, I mean, Mike Miles, uh, TCU guy down the street, down the road, you know, that Dallas looks in and, and scouts those guys. Uh, but he, he's fine. He's a smaller point guard. He's a lot of fun. I think he should have been drafted, you know, somewhere in the second round. But um, his size, you know, holds it back with that. But anyway, uh, fun. It's two-way spot. Not a ton of expectations with that. No. Bringing it back full circle. Dallas went into tonight with the 10th pick. And they walked out tonight, in my opinion, with two top 20 guys closer, closer to using the MLE, a full $12 million MLE, which can add a solid, solid rotation piece yes. this offseason. And you swapped out a guy in Davis Bertans who is not going to be in your rotation for a guy in Rashawn Holmes who very well could be in your rotation. I think that is as much as a, I mean, yes, you could get a, a a better win now guy like a DeAndre Hunter or something like that. You're like, man, that but he was didn't like move. really impressive. Atlanta he didn't, didn't move. move any of those guys. Yeah, and you know, there's a kind of a lack of trades in general tonight. They really, as were. far as like, well, there, there's tricks, a bunch but, of trades that moved around. Like the Celtics moved down like yeah. three times, and guys were they were flopping pip, picks around, but it wasn't like players were really moving tonight. For for Nico and them to do that, I think is so impressive. And such a win for, and it is the first, the first, you know, day's first move of what this offseason is going to look like as they revamp this roster around Luca and most likely Kyrie Irving. Absolutely. We'll be back uh, probably on Monday, maybe before then, if something else happens. Oh, before then, we got to talk about this more over the weekend. All right. We'll talk about this more. We'll be back, guys. Thanks so much for listening to us on Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom. <laughs> 